Good morning, Linux lovers. My name's Wimpy. Welcome to my world. Right, it's more retro emulation time. Uh, well, I say emulation time. It's a lot. We're a ways from that. We're looking at the system internals of how the Ubuntu Retro Remix is stitched together. Yesterday, I was trying to use Cloud Init to simplify some of the initial sort of device provisioning stuff. Um, long story short, uh, we're ripping that out. <laughs> this it's creating more issues than uh, there are benefit, benefits to be had. So I'll be explaining why we're getting rid of that, uh, what we're replacing it with, and then we're going to look at what the integration points are in the operating system with Ludo, which is the uh, Libretro front end we're going to use to power all of this. And with a bit of luck and a following wind, we might even get to the point where we can uh, play some uh, retro games. Well, I say play, at least just, you know, put some on the device, scan them, see that they show up. Maybe we'll discover we've got stuff missing that we need, um, but uh, we're gonna start getting to the point where it's a usable thing. Um, at the moment, we've still got a massive safety net, which is uh, we're booting into a window manager with a terminal um, but uh, hopefully what today we'll look at like how we're going to move away from that but we don't want to do that until we're, we're satisfied that the sort of the the fundamentals of the operating system are there and working so that we have access to it um, over the network should we need to good morning Linux Paul how are you doing so anyone that's watching this on YouTube after the fact, this is originally recorded live on Twitch on November the 10th on twitch.tv slash Wimpy's World. Morning, Paul. Uh, good to see you. Oh, my goodness. What's get what's going on? The this ad thing, it's it's just not working for me anyway. How are you? Have you got a cup of tea today? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> right then. Uh, I've got a cup of tea. So we're um, you've got a lovely cup of tea. Oh yes, you uh, you you do you do choose well. Very nice too. Hey King Egypt, how you doing? I'm very well. How are you? So uh, oh, I can see my stream is jumping around a little bit here. Okay, looks like uh, looks like. Looks like the bit rate's a little bit all over the place. I'll just keep an eye on that. Okay, it looks stable where it should be at the moment. So we'll just, uh, some Yorkshire. Yes, that's what I'm, uh, in fact, I'm not. I've uh, I've got Twining's Gold this morning. Right then. So, yesterday, um, we're almost going to forget like yesterday happened. I learned a few things, but... Um, we're not going to be doing the cloud in it thing. We're going to move away from that. And we're going to focus instead on um, keeping things simple and nimble. Uh, that's kind of like um, where I'm trying to head with this. Keep it at all times, keep it as simple and as straightforward as possible. Um, right then. So let's have a little think. Let's go and look at what we've got so far. If I just need to go and check over here that uh, everything is up and running uh i think it looks like it is yes good job okay i need to do better at that um so where were we if we take a look over here um we'll we'll bring up the code editor we'll actually no we won't what we'll do first of all is we'll build we'll start building a fresh image um to do that we'll use the code that's here um, oh, there we go. There we go. It's be even better if I get on the right screen. There we go. Uh, so I've got all of the necessary stages there. We're going to do a complete build. So whilst it's building, we'll take a look at this and explain how the sort of the internals of this are going to be pinned together. So um, let's run a build. This is the command to do it. So I'm running this inside my VM. This is a full screen terminal because um, the VM is really going to only do two things, build the image and copy image to the host machine. And then the one thing we are going to do differently today, uh, if I just switch to this view, is uh, I have an SSD here. Um, so we're going to use an SSD um, instead of a uh, SD card. One, because uh, it's much, much faster. 
and actually experimenting with this at home last night revealed a problem with cloud in it which is why I ultimately decided to get rid of it. So them's what we're going to be doing so let's kick the kick the build off that can be running in the background. Um, my password is test by the way. Right so that's off and running. I hope this is going to work. <laughs> Yes. as always I've made some untested changes we'll see how we go uh, yes these are quite small so um, they're not they're not sold as SSDs but they actually are uh, let me just bring up the overhead again so they're um, Corsair GTX something or others uh, there's a big cap the whole thing is made out of metal they're actually quite you know chunky robust devices and it looks like a USB drive but the internals of this are a fully uh, DRAM backed SSD and I'll demonstrate that when we come to writing images uh, on these and I really use these for just like shunting data between devices because they're fast and they're high capacity this one's not that high capacity I think it was a 128 gig um, and then the reason I've got the tail on it is because um, because it is a, an actual SSD in there it's quite a wide um, thing so you can't put it in the back of the pie because it fouls the ports so we put a rat tail on it and then we can plug it into the pie easily so that's what we're going to be using as the storage device today and of course that's helpful because um, lots of people always say oh can it do um, SSD um, so I know for a fact yes it absolutely can now <laughs> it doesn't require any messing around it just works so um let's have a look there not that i've noticed um but i'll test that today uh, as i write to it i mean th this whole thing like i say this whole thing is uh, a metal enclosure so you know i imagine it dissipates heat quite well but i've i've never noticed them warm but when it's writing today i will give it a touch test and let you know right okay then so let's take a look at hang on a minute let's run suspiciously quickly i don't believe that's done what i asked it to do that's got to be a lie yeah something's not right there um Something's not right there. That can't have gone that quick. I'm just making sure it's the right version of the... Uh... No, something hasn't synced. Something hasn't synced. One moment. Uh... So that's fine. And where's the it says hmm hmm maybe I need to re-establish that because if I using an old hmm. it says it's using that but I don't believe it so let me just go and check that I just need to check a couple of things here one moment uh, it's always the way isn't it so this is public which is the same as that yeah I've got this very loop backed arrangement uh, on this uh, system here so why has that done that
See, that says that file hasn't changed since yesterday. Um, which is wrong, because on the host machine, I have a current version here, I'm certain of it. Yes, I do have the current version here. Um, so what have I done here then? Let's look at public on this machine. Ah, that'll be white. That'll be white. So on this machine, it's lost the sim link. So, oh, maybe it doesn't even look like a sim link thinking about it. Uh, just taking a look to see, yeah, that's a different script. So let's, rm that image um and do that that's now a current image and i can tell because those two lines are missing yeah fine so let's just uh i just didn't I expected that to work without issue. Um, right then, let's... Uh, where am I going now? I want to make sure that the host machine is fine, which is over here, or the VM is fine. So if we come back here, the script now has the current date and time on it that's good and we will run that again which will regenerate the image there we go that's doing the right thing now well there we go hello 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 welcome Yannick <laughs> even though you can't hear right then oh that's cheeky I hadn't thought of that Right then, so that's running. Let's go and take a look at what's going on now then. Um, we'll leave that there. And here we go. So nothing's changed here. This is all stand, this is all boilerplate stuff. This is all the same and the unpacking the image to get at the OS files is the same. I've changed this ever so slightly in that we are now removing cloud in it. Um, so I was trying to use that yesterday. That simply wasn't working for me and it got exacerbated uh, when I actually moved on to using the SSD. This was so much quicker that um, <laughs> the race condition that I had observed got worse. Um, the system came up so fast that uh, clouding it was way behind doing what it needed to do when the rest of the system was saying, well, I'm ready for a graphical environment. Where is it? So the whole system got deadlocked. So we're removing clouded knit and we're going to do the user provisioning um, by hand. Uh, well, by hand, we're going to write it into this script. So this is removing everything off that Raspberry Pi image, which is Ubuntu server for the Raspberry Pi. So this is removing all of the server specific stuff to give us like um, more of a minimal base. Uh, then we install all of the Raspberry Pi bits and bobs, you know, video core stuff. And we also add this, which is the same mechanism I use in the Ubuntu Mate images for the Raspberry Pi to grow the root file system. So this goes into the initial RAM disk and on for very early on first boot, this gets triggered and it resizes the uh, writable partition and grows the file system um, uh, without having to do a reboot. So it does a live, live resize. So that was one of the facilities that Cloudinit was handling for us. So we already had a solution for that 
Um, the other that it was handling for us is the user provisioning, which we'll get to in a minute. And then the other thing was um, SSH. Um, and I'll need to do some manual SSH wrangling. And in fact, at the moment, have I completely removed the open SSH server? I haven't. Okay, that's fine. All right, then that's good. So other bits that we need. Um, we need this for rebuilding override schemas, but we won't need it for long because we've got our safety harness, which I'll talk about in a moment, which requires some GTK stuff, but we'll we'll get rid of that when things have stabled. We obviously need um, the X server for graphics. And then again, this is part of our safety net. We're booting into a display manager, which is what you know is like the login screen. Um, and we're doing that so that we can boot into a regular X session, which is currently open box. And what we've got is just open box and a terminal. And that gives us like a safe place to actually sort of test the integrity of the system and see what's working, what's broken. And eventually we'll get rid of that. But at the moment, that's like our sort of little place where we're iterating. Um, looking at the Ludo, um, not source, but I downloaded the image, the, the dev. Oh, that's the other change that we'll get to in a moment. And they're using this font called M plus. So I'm installing that on the system in case we need to do any other sort of system level integrations, we can use the same font. And then we're going to be running Ludo, which is the libretro front end, in uh, a mode which they use for their Ludos, which is um, uh, an open elec or Libra elec based uh, emulator. Um, and that has some additional services. It can manipulate Bluetooth and Samba and uh, wireless connectivity and it uses conman for that so we install conman so we can configure wi-fi from within ludo and then samba is how we'll be able to get uh, roms and stuff like that on and off of the device over the network and bluesy i think is mostly going to be for um controller support um so that stuff we'll have to figure out and then this is our uh, in air quotes desktop environment so a graphical front end for conman so we can configure wi-fi you know without having to use ludo and i'll explain why i did that a bit later a terminal it's the, the bare essentials of what we need and then open box just to you know give us something to log into and then what i was doing is i was using the tarball binary releases of ludo uh, and extracting those in places. But then I've seen that, that uh, fairly recently they actually started publishing devs. So I thought, well, uh, as I'm building on top of Ubuntu, I will grab the deb of Ludo. So that's what we do. So we download the current release and we extract that deb onto the system. That does a couple of things for us. It installs any dependencies that Ludo needs without having to know ahead of time what those are. And it also um, puts things on the file system in a more correct way. So things go in, you know, user share, user lib and user bin and what have you. So uh, that's the other change. And actually doing this caused me to go and to, hey, <laughs> hello, Luca, you caught up yet? Good morning. How are you doing? So by using the deb, that caused me to go and look at uh, Ludos. I downloaded Ludos and extracted their system image and had a poke around in there and that informed the rest of what uh, I, I needed to do. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> so you're you're out of sync. Okay so just to catch you up very quickly I've rebooted a project called uh, Ubuntu Retro Remix which is to make a retro games console operating system. So it's Ubuntu plus a libretro front end called Ludo. And I'm stitching that together. And uh, hopefully we'll see in a bit, I'm making good progress. There's an image building in the background and we'll stick that on the device and, and have a play. Um, also, I'd like a logo, Luke. Now the project has a logo. I'd like that logo, but in different colors. <laughs> I'll chat to you about that later. Um, so this is unchanged this basically just yanks all of uh, you've already thought about it so you'll find in the wimpy's world github luke there is a project called um ubuntu retro remix and it has a logo 
and I quite like the logo. I made it, um, but the color scheme isn't what I want now. So if you look at Ludo, the thing that I'm using, they use sort of pinks and soft oranges Thank and what you have for you. The follow XQ come Galil 69 Gar 2N. Wow, that's a complicated name. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> is that a bot or is that a real person? Um, so uh, we yank all the snaps off the system because we don't have any need for them. Um, so we just uh, purge all of that off the off the drive and then we get into the configuration and this is where we step things up a bit although i've removed cloud init i continue to drop the necessary config file into the cloud init directory to tell it don't try and bring up any network at all because we want conman to be um, our place for that this is then the system uh, configuration for ludo ludo and I basically just copied this off of the Ludos drive. And this is what gave me some insight into what needs to be done. So this was handy to know. And then looking in the source code, I could see what some of the other keys were. So um, because we're installing from the dev now, it puts the libretro cores here and it creates an assets directory here. And then the database, you know, the DAT files for the ROMs goes there and so on. Now this slash storage, this could go anywhere, but what I've noticed is uh, by looking at the source code for Ludo is that when you um, run it in Ludos mode, which is how I would like to run it, it has some hard coded paths for slash storage for how it manages these services. So consequently, I've decided to as closely mimic as possible what Ludos expects, because I think the closer I adhere to their thinking the easier it will be uh, for me so this is the basic configuration hey destrico how you doing um so then this these aren't actually implemented properly yet we just create these but again this is taken from um ludos and how i intend to use these is when we're satisfied that ludo comes up reliably we can configure the network we can connect to the device over the network then I can throw away the display manager an open box and we can bring Ludo up directly via system D so we can hammer up uh, Ludo very quickly so as soon as it gets to network state and graphical environment target is available Ludo can actually grab that and be the only you know graphical app that runs on the device so that that's this isn't hooked up yet these are these are services and targets that have been dropped in the appropriate place but they haven't been enabled so this is you know ready and this is where we'll be going in the future and then this is an adaptation of how they configure samba in ludos so um i won't explain line by line what's going on here because Samba configurations are lengthy but the interesting thing is there's a number of paths and um, they have a rather clever idea which is they um, you can uh, discover the device on your network and then as you navigate through the trees of the device it will first of all you get a directory listing uh, when you just browse the device of all of these you know nicely labeled names and when you actually go and try and view inside them, the system then creates these directories on the fly as it needs to, which I thought was kind of nifty. So we've left all of that and all of these are just exposed to the world uh, available for use. So um, yeah, I'm keeping that. We'll, we may tweak that a little bit, but for the purposes of getting started, that's all fine. And as you can see, we're using slash storage as the root for all of this. Um, this is just um, the display manager. This can go once we no longer need a display manager, but that's a minimal configuration to just make that work. And then the other thing that we do is we take the Ludo desktop file, which is to launch the app, and then we copy it that into the X sessions location as Ludos. This I haven't tested, so I'm hoping this will work when we bring the, uh, the device up in a bit. 
and then we just change the way it executes. So instead of just running Ludo the app, we run it in Ludos mode and we also change the name. Um, so that's just so I've got two, um, two, two ways to launch the app. One when I'm inside the window manager and then another way as part of like the system. This brings up the display manager. Um, our first thing is once we're happy things are working, we'll be able to change that to uh, Ludos and actually use the display manager to go directly into Ludo. And when we're happy that's working, then that's when we can then switch over to a system D initialized version. Uh, there's nothing special about the um, boot configuration. This is what you would expect for a Raspberry Pi. Um, and then this is where clouding it got thrown away and I started doing it by hand. So I really wanted cloud in it to do uh, three things. There was three, th there's many things it can do, but there was three things that I wanted. User creation, um, SSH key regeneration, and what was the third thing? Users, SSH, oh, and growing the file system. So we'll look at growing the file system in just a moment. So uh, here we create the um, a user account. So we're going to create um, a user account called Ludo. Um, and uh, its password is test, by the way. Uh, that won't be the final password. I'm just, you know, going off the rest of the meme here. So um, uh, we will uh, create the group for that. Uh, GID 1000, which is the standard first user GID. These are um, groups that some Raspberry Pi modules require. So we're creating these because some of these more exotic devices that I want to sort of get this working on, if I just go to the overhead view, um, these sorts of devices have hats um, and not that you can see very well here, but there uh, there are hat modules for these. Um, and um, I want to integrate into the Retro Remix the appropriate, um, in air quotes, drivers or hat modules and what have you to make all of these, you know, screens and stuff work. So um, I'm basically, you know, in order to facilitate that, making sure that all of the um, capabilities of the Raspberry Pi that you would use as a maker are enabled inside this retro console. So when we come to um, hats for wiring looms, for arcade controller sticks and what have you, we should have access to all of the stuff that we need. And uh, I could have just created the user and added them to these groups. But there's, if you've ever read the add user man page, there's this nifty little um, feature. I was going to call it a hack. It might be a hack, but it's a feature. It's documented, so it must be a feature. Where if you create um, this file, add user.local in user local sbin, this will run when you uh, uh, create a user with add user. So what I'm doing here is um, adding new users automatically to these groups, which are the additional groups that you want to be a member of when you're doing maker stuff on a Raspberry Pi. So we create that script, make it executable, and then we create our user. So we create a user called Ludo, which is towards the end. We give it a descriptive name. We um, add some additional groups, which are part of the um, sort of the Ubuntu setup. Uh, we um, disable the interactive password prompt because up here we generated a password hash and salted it with the current date. It's not mega secure, but it's good enough for, um, you know, um, what we're doing here. We then tell this account that its home directory is slash storage. And that is because uh, Ludos has this expectation that some stuff is definitely going to be hard coded there. So I thought, well, wait, let's make that our home directory. Uh, then we can we can always be sure our directory context is um, is is set up. 
So then uh, we assign the GID and the UID, which is 1000, and the user account is Ludo. So what this will mean is when the device comes up, we should have a user account with the username Ludo and the password of test, and we'll be in all the right groups for poking at Raspberry Pi stuff. Um, and then there's a couple of directories um, that aren't auto-generated. So poking around inside the Ludo source code, there's a cache directory for Conman. I don't know what it's used for yet, but I can see that it, 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 it expects it to be there. And the same for services. And it looks like it tries to store, read, access, configuration files regarding to the state of Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Samba. So um, those don't get, those are not referenced in that Samba configuration we looked at earlier. So I'm just making sure these are provisioned ahead of time and have the appropriate um, ownership. Uh, this is uh, just to make sure the display manager configuration is uh, accepted and then we create a new FS tab and we add this here which um, is the flag that instructs our grow root FS um, uh, script that we're, we, we've added to the initial RAM disk. This is the, the trigger for the hook to say Let's uh, resize the, the file system now. So King Egypt, you didn't know about this uh, add user hack. Yeah, neither did I until I, it's amazing, it's amazing the things you learn when you read a man page. <laughs> it's quite handy that, but it only works it's specifically add user. It doesn't work with user add, because of course we have both. But there we go. It's, um, that's a, it's a handy, handy little feature that. So uh, moving on, the cleanup script is unchanged, I think. Uh, so this is just making sure that the device is mopped up so it's um, pristine. And uh, we've added these here, which is to remove the three files that are the user exposed configurable bits for CloudyNit. So we, we drag those off the boot partition as well. None of this has changed. Uh, and I don't think any of this sort of image building stuff, this is just copying data around and, you know, making block devices. So that's the script. So that sort of explains what's going on with all of that. And hopefully we should have. Uh, did I? I didn't want to be there, did I? Here. Now we have an image that's been built. So 606 meg, that finished five minutes ago. So let's, um, there it is. Uh, let's copy this into the public drive, which is connected to the host. Uh, copy to the other pane. Okay, so at this point, we'll now um, uh, we're going to use this. Uh, we're going to write the drive uh, out to this SSD. So I'll just jam that in the front of here. Um, right. So this is the image that we've just copied over. So we'll write that out to, oh, this is 256 gig, this one. And what you'll notice is I said, this is an SSD in a USB enclosure. Uh, this is how you'll be able to tell uh, because you will notice that this is going to go uh, along a quite a lick. I've now got hold of this drive. Um, it's stone cold at the moment, by the way, because it's a, it's a hard metal enclosure. But, um,
I mean, it's only warming up because I'm holding it. <laughs> it's my assessment. <laughs> it's not very scientific, I know, but that doesn't feel like that is uh, getting warm at all. I'll grab it at the end. So, um, yeah, this one of the reasons for using these is uh, they're much quicker to write, so it, the, t the iteration time is faster. There we go, it's done. And it's cold to the touch. Uh, but I, I, it didn't write very long, but it did just transfer four gig of data. So there we go. So that's that done. We'll, um, we'll now switch over to the overhead view. We'll drag this off here. We'll plug this in around the back. Ah, uh, oh, right. Let's move the mouse and keyboard to the USB 2 ports and put the SSD in the USB 3 port. Like so. And then I've got the second keyboard here, which will turn on. And they're, they're plugged into these wireless dongles on the back of the Pi, these, this mouse and keyboard. So wake that one up, wake that one up. This is now where I start typing on the wrong keyboard and moving the wrong mouse around all the time, but you know, such is life. So that's that. We'll um, bring the chat back and go to the capture overview. So we'll just turn the main PSU on and then turn the Pi on. So the Pi is booting up now. Uh, I can see the blue light has come on the SSD. So I, I do need to do something about moving my uh so you can see the flashing cursor there <sighs> uh, orblish <laughs> you just uh reminded me i still need a pie yeah you should get one so uh they're brilliant welcome to the stream by the way thanks for stopping by so the file system's been resized already so the file system expansion has happened and it's not rebooting and that's it we're actually in the desktop already uh, i say desktop we're in the window manager so here we are so that's the system booted up for the first time considerably quicker than when we were trying to use um cloud in it. So if we open uh, a terminal, um, we'll do that and over here, we can just go and have a little poke around. So I wonder how the Pine, oh, it'll be absolutely fine with awesome WM. Um, I mean, it can run full composited desktops now, the Raspberry Pi 4 at least. Um, so first of all, if we look at our current directory, we're in slash storage because we set that as home for our Ludo user. And if we have a look at the hidden directories, um, so you'll also notice that the XDG directories exist, you know, desktop documents and what have you. Those won't be there when we move away from bringing up the display manager and using a sort of a fake desktop environment. When we are using systemd to bring the emulator up directly, this will be a pristine home directory just for the um, the emulation Thank related stuff. Thank you for stuff. the follow, Thanks, Orblish. Thanks very much and welcome. I should probably uh, probably just do this very quickly. You've just reminded me of a thing I should do. Let's do that. Let's save that. End that. Click that that there do that there we go <laughs> i forgot to do this so um so so far so good the system's up if we go and look um let's have a think what were some of the things that i was interested in looking at um well We look at the running processes. Let's just drag some of this off over here. And 
do that again. So it's fairly minimal already, even though we're running an unnecessary display server. So we've got um, Dbus running, cron, systemd, uh, and then this is conman. Dundee's part of conman as well. Um, I wonder why network D dispatcher is running there. That could explain something. A phono is part is used by conman for um, mobile connections. If you've got a 3G dongle or whatever. Um, syslog stuff, disk related stuff, more Wi-Fi stuff, uh, unattended upgrades, then our display manager, all of which will eventually go away. Um, and then system D again. And then this is part of the Bluetooth stuff for the Pi itself. And then an accessibility layer, which won't be present in the final thing once we do away with the display manager. And then here is just enough Samba. So Samba is socket activated. So if we were to browse Samba over the network, we would see it and it would start up the other services and start creating those directories we looked at earlier. Now, I have discovered today that because of where I am, uh, each device on the wireless network here is isolated. So I can't actually view this over Wi-Fi here. So you just have to take my word for it that that did work. And I'm gonna to have to think about putting in some sort of like wireless access point with a switch inside it here in my office so I can create a LAN in this room. So I need to have a little think about that. So let's run up Ludo itself just in regular Ludo mode as opposed to um, uh, the Ludos mode. And I'll show you, show you how they differ from one another. So it brings it up and I think, I don't know why Openbox causes it to come up in a, an odd arrangement, but this is what the Ludo user interface looks like. And um, we've got some toggles here. I'll just turn the chat off for a second. Uh, although, oh, so there's 20% off some of the Argon 40 cases. Yeah, I, I like the Argon cases, they're decent. So that full screen toggle is enabled by default because you know we did that. There's a dark mode, which is uh, nice, uh, which we could potentially toggle. And then here we can see, you know, these configurations to where things have been configured to run. Now, this is configurable in this mode because we're running it like an app. Um, but if we, and you'll notice there's no Wi-Fi configuration and there's no service configuration in here. But if we press escape, we will quit the, quit Ludo in time. In fact, Z, it, it's got like, you only use this through um, controller. So the keyboard commands map to like controller inputs. So if we press escape, we will finish the whole thing. We can then run Ludo, Dash, no, just one dash Ludos to run it in like I'm an OS uh, device mode. Um, and that will come up and you'll will notice it looks a little bit different when it actually uh, starts up. Here it is. So if we look in here now, the first thing we can see is that the first menu is a Wi-Fi is for configuring Wi-Fi, which we'll come back to in just a moment. Um, all of this is the same, but then none of the paths to where things live are available because we're basically, you prescribe that when it's in device mode, you prescribe it. But then we get these three additional options for enabling SSH, Samba and Bluetooth. And this is where I think a bunch of work is going to have to happen because if I try and turn one of those on, I get these error messages no such file or directory. So I think I need to go and find out exactly what the expectation here is for these files and uh, what have you, because those always fire off errors. And interestingly, Bluetooth is enabled, so is Sambra's uh, SSH is uh, sitting there it's um you know socket activated so you could connect uh that way as well so those are the differences in how it functions now we'll um 
We'll just come out of here a second and bring the chat back. So, um, Orblish says, I like Debian and would run it as a daily desktop distro, but isn't updating things kind of a pain? You think things like app picture and flat packs could make that more manageable or just compile the stuff you need? So, um, I uh, am a Debian maintainer. Um, I used to work at Canonical uh, until quite recently. Um, and I worked on snaps and what have you. So, um, yeah, you're right. You know, if this was a device that I was making that, you know, it was going to be sold in the thousands, I would probably look more closely at something like, you know, snaps or, or containers as a means to deliver some of it. Um, but this is a hobby project and I want to make something that's quick and simple and functional as quickly as possible. Um, and as a result, um, I'm, I'm avoiding some of that stuff because there's extra work in keeping those applications confined. Uh, <laughs> and he says, oh wait, aren't you the one who hangs out in Cat5? I have been there, yes. Um, so yeah, I used to I used to be the engineering director for Ubuntu, um, and I the other project of mine that we're working on within this community is QuickMU, which is that sort of a, um, optimized hypervisor wrapper. So um, King Egypt says, I wonder what UI library Ludo uses. It's entirely implemented in Go, um, and it's all done in OpenGL. Uh, or GL because it's GLES or whatever depending on the device but I don't know that they're using a framework as such um, but I did see that they've got a PR which is a draft for a UI refresh uh, so that would be interesting to see how that pans out so what we're going to do now is plug in a controller <laughs> So here is um, an, uh, uh, an Xbox 360 controller, and you'll notice, uh, you know, fitting in with the uh, the Star Wars theme here. So let's just plug this in. Now, the reason I've chosen this, I haven't tested it, but I've chosen this because I feel that there's a, a reasonable chance of success with this actually being detected as a functioning device. I suppose, actually, let's just move over to here. So Ludo's not running at the moment. Right, okay, good. So we'll just get this plugged in. There we go. So let's, uh, let's go and look and see. Thank you for the follow, Biting Bits. Hey, Biting Bits. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome to the stream. So, um, hmm. Martin notices things are not working as intended on the uh, stream automa automation today. Never, never mind. Um, so let's just do um, D message and my password is test by the way. There, oh, that's, that proves that works at least. So we can see um, uh, an Xbox controller going in. Okay. Um, so I, if I rarely compile, well, I say rarely, I do compile code from source. I don't ship code that is built from source. So I will figure out how to build something from source so it can be packaged in some fashion. I've never used flat packs. And in fact, on occasion when I encounter flat packs, like for example, I'm using Atom for some stream automation stuff, which for Linux is available as, as a flat pack. I D, uh, no, not as a flat pack, sorry. It's available as an app image. Um, when I encounter software that's an app image, I extract it from the app image and then figure out how to run it uh, outside of that app image stuff um, because that's it's flaky AF. Um, Flat packs seem perfectly fine. Uh, I have used them. I've never made one. 
Uh, they seem to be growing in adoption, particularly as a result of Silver Blue, which I think was uh, very impressive. And I took a look at, there's an, I stream for work on Slim DevOps um, channel here. And last week on Thursday, George Castro and I took a look at Silver Blue um, and uh, running Silver Blue with containers to create your work environments and where you run your games and stuff like that. So um, head over there. That's the last uh, VOD that we did over there. So in this case, the way that this device is built, um, I'm using a Deb from the Upstream Ludo project to deliver the app. And at the moment, I'm just trying to get this device functional. I say device, it's a script that builds a device image. I'm just trying to get it functional. Once I've got all of the bits pieced together, then I'll start thinking about, well, how does this device get updates? And I'll think about that another day. At the moment, it's just like, does all of this fit together and work? Um, so yeah, app image is, it makes too many assumptions. You know, it says it's um, con uh, containerized, you know, isolated, but it's not because it absolutely relies on what's on the host. And as soon as you get, um, ABI breakage, then it all it all falls apart. So as a consequence, what I do is I strip the app out of the app image, or rather, because you it, it it will bundle some libraries, but not all of them. So I remove the app from the app image, and then I run it on the local machine because then I know it's only using those libraries from the local machine, rather than this sort of you know. ABI mismatch that it, it, it would try and run otherwise. Right then. Um, so let's run up Ludo. Not with the Ludo OS mode. We've got a controller plugged in. Let's see what it makes of this. See if this controller is detected. I, I had last time I did this with Ludo. It seemed to use, so the analog sticks don't do anything. Ah, but the, the up, down, left, right keys do. How do I get in here? Okay. Up, ah, right, okay. So I am navigating around using, using this. Okay. So I can turn dark mode on dark mode off okay so this controller is working so I'm gonna quit the whole thing and then come back in in um, Ludos mode so we can get some of those get that Wi-Fi menu back and uh, which one was it Y, no, X, B, there we go. So there's the Wi-Fi menu. If I press that, none found. Now I saw this. There we go. So on second time of asking, it found the list. Thank you for the follow, Lutkin. Hey, Lutkin. Thanks for stopping by the stream and thanks for the follow. So um, if I click on this, it brings up a keyboard overlay and I can put in the password. So I'm just going to uh, do that this way. Oh, I can't see it. Uh, uh, how am I going to do this? Oh, I know. I know. I've got, I've, I've, got, I've, got a, I've got a way of doing this. One moment. So you won't be able to see this, but hopefully I can do that and then go here right okay let's see if I can do this then so I'm using the controller to do this uh, oh that was the wrong button to push okay let's try this again oh that's the wrong oh, dear. go there right Okay, I'm off. I'm off the races. I've done the first character. We're up, we're, we're we're doing it now. I think this this um, on-screen keyboard could 
use just a little bit of um, stay a uh, little bit of nuance okay okay I'm still typing characters it's a long it's a long Wi-Fi password and what I'm thinking is uh, there's there doesn't appear to be a backspace which would be very helpful which is why I've had to restart from scratch a couple of times and I'm fortunate that all of the characters I need are on this keyboard because I can't remember how or I don't know how you toggle it so is that the let me just one moment uh, turn the chat overlays off I wonder how I actually tell it that that password is done. Let's press the start button. Oh, permission denied. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, move back to, I'm just going to turn this off. So I need to do some work here. Um, right. What we ran into there is as I tried to save that it got a permission denied so we're going to drop out of ludo so uh let's just there's a cache dir ah oh, the cache directory is owned by root look so we need to change that um That's not actually the correct incantation, was it? So I'm going to need to change the build script so that we don't end up in that situation. Is there anything else that's owned by root in here? There's not. Okay. Well, let's, let's try this again. And let's just do that thing where we toggled the services to see if that also changes anything um, in the way that those work. Um, okay. Um, and then King Egypt says, I felt a bit dirty with that image, not sure why. It's a sensible concept. Um, it's just, like I say, it, 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 when it works, it works. And then when it doesn't, you, you're out of luck. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Let's just toggle one of these now and see what happens. Cache services, no such file or directory. Let's just go and check that those exist. Oh, uh. okay. Spot the mistake. <laughs> My shell expansion in the build script uh, didn't work properly. So let's um, let's make these by hand. So let's do that. Um, so those exist um, and let's run up Ludo again and see what happens when we do this. Well, that's frustrating. Can you believe that? There's me trying to be clever and it's totally, totally snookered me. Right. Um, uh, right, let's try turning that one. Okay, now we get exit status one. Uh, that's probably worse because I, I have no useful information now. So press escape. Uh, oh, it's created files though. Zero byte files. I wonder if it expects those to have some information in them. I think, I think those are supposed to have data in them that tells Ludo like what 
maybe what system D unit it's supposed to be manipulating. So I'll have to go and hunt around in the um, source code to figure that out. But I suppose what we could do is we could provision those files accordingly. So, and we probably want to change the default configuration in Ludo to recognize that these services are enabled because they are, uh, you know, out of the box, they'll be turned on. Yeah, PPAs are not a panacea either, you know, and that's why, you know, Snaps came into existence. I gave a talk at UbuCon a couple of years ago, in fact, exactly two years ago now, um, talking about, you know, how, how Snaps evolved out of what was learned through PPAs and delivering software as devs. Um, you know, for particular use cases, because, you know, there's nothing wrong with devs. It's just like there are some use cases where you want something more robust. Right. OK, so we've learned a couple of things there. So now that that all exists, I should be able to go back into I'm just going to turn the chat back on. Sorry, I, I, I've got this naughty habit of turning it off and then forgetting. Um, let's just uh, run this up again and we'll try and join the Wi-Fi. I want to try and join the Wi-Fi using the on-screen keyboard because if I can do that and then prove that there's a network connection, that means that if I actually had a LAN here, which I don't, but if I had a LAN here, I would then be able to SSH into the box and that would be my back door for when I need to go and do things like I've just done, which is create some directories and set some permissions because I was missing, you know, some information. So let's try this again. Let's go here, press that button, to, that button to enter, this button to enter, looking for networks. Okay. So I'm just going to move that to here and turn on studio mode so I can then look at a different view which I'm not broadcasting and now I can try and sign into the network so here we go I, should, I might be a bit quicker now I'm typing in characters using the on-screen keyboard And I, I think I may have guessed correctly that the start button on the Xbox 360 controller is the um, is the enter key. I'm, I'm guessing that that was right. I wonder if back on the uh, controller is delete. We'll try that another time. I just want to prove that this can get on the network. Because when I looked at Ludo, I don't know, about just over a year ago, I wasn't able to get these integrations working at all. So I'm pressing the start button. I got exit state as well. <clears throat> okay. Right then, let's come out of there, move back to uh, turn off studio mode and come back to here so i tried to log in and uh, it didn't like that so uh i may i may need to do this off stream as well so ah look at that it has it has created something. I'm just going to uh, <coughs> just going to take a look at what's in there off stream because um, I, I, there may be passwords in that. So one one mini moment. Uh, I'm going to struggle to see them if there are any passwords in there, but. Okay. Yes, the passphrase is in there. So it did actually write out some configuration. 
Um, so let's just clear that and uh, turn off studio mode. I'm glad I actually learned what studio mode was for the other day because it's quite, <laughs> quite handy. Um, and then come back to code view. Oh, no, that's the wrong thing. We want over here, don't we? So um, let's just do this. I don't think, yeah, it didn't join the network. Well, bother. So it's close. It's very close. Um, so I need to find out why it's flagging those error states because it did create a configuration just fine. I wonder why it doesn't like it. Hmm. Well, I'll need to look in the Ludo source code to figure that out, I think. But um, the other thing that we can do potentially. Hey, uh, so Linux Paul says um, snaps are great. Flat packs too. I wish devs would pick one of them for distribution. Well, Oh, I see. Um, yeah, because the Flatpak and Snap, I, I know they're compared quite often, but they they serve different audiences. Flatpak is entirely uh, desktop orientated, um, and certainly what I looked at last week, um, it was it was very good, and it's, it seems things have improved quite a bit just recently, which is is which is good to see. Right then, let's try this. Let's try. Um, Let's see if we can enable those uh, system D targets and units to bring up Ludo directly. Um, so let's enable um, the Ludo target. And there it is. And we'll do the same for the Ludo service and we will let's let's actually uh let's let's kill the system big style let's go for a purge of light dm slick greeter open box uh what else did we have mate terminal and conman gtk oh i think that might be hyphenated okay remove all of those things and then we'll clean up after the fact Um, so this is a complete guess <laughs> um, as to whether this is going to be the right thing to do. But what we're doing is uh, enabling uh, system D to start Ludo uh, when uh, the graphical environment stage comes up at boot and we're removing all of our safety net. So there is no open box or any of that stuff now. There is no um, display manager. So this is to test uh, that the process should work. Although we've got things to fix with wireless network integrations, let's just go with this for now. So we're gonna do a reboot. And if this boots directly into Ludo, I will be extremely happy. <laughs> Um, it won't change the fact that we have a bunch of work to do with making sure the network comes up reliably, but hey ho, small victories. Hey Yannick, how you doing? Um, it is running, uh, actually, but I don't know why stuff is not working. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. It's all there. All the redeems are there. I wonder if it's lost its connection with... Oh, here we go. So, 
So hang on a sec, Yannick. It is running, but it wasn't connected. Let's try again. Okay. So you yeah, try something now, Yannick. I think it might work. I, in fact, I can do it. I can do the. I can do the one that you triggered. One moment. Uh, I need to remember where I've put all of these things. I think you triggered this one. Which I've got on a black screen, which isn't very helpful. <laughs> right, um, so it looks like removing all of that didn't didn't actually work because what we can see here, I can't turn my uh I can't move my oh, yes, I can, I can move my camera. Let's just get rid of my camera a second. So uh that didn't work at all because now we've been dropped in here. Um so we didn't bring up Ludo at all. Uh, my password is test, by the way. Um, so. Hmm. There's disappointing. So, why didn't that work, I wonder? Oh, and the host name will need changing as well. That was something else I was doing with... Uh... Oh, you still don't have sound. Okay. Um, I think this might not be coming up because there is no network, potentially. Um, well, that's clearly the big job to figure out is why the network doesn't come up. And that will be uh, the next thing to uh, to dig into. So if I just turn my camera back on. Uh, right. So what have I learned? The system D stuff, that's far from functioning at the moment. And uh, the network stuff doesn't work, which is, these are all big problems. <laughs> <laughs> so we have our, we still have our safety net booting into the display manager. So we continue to use that as a um, band aid, but we really need to get that network piece going. Um, and I'm not sure why that didn't work. So I'm going to have to poke around at that. And this place may not be the best best spot to do that because, as I say, I'm basically on a um, restricted network thing here, so I can't get from one device to another here. So I think I'll have to bring in one of my routers from home and put that up on the shelf here and effectively just create my own LAN so that I can poke at things like that. Uh, King Egypt says, yes, you like snaps too. Um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting when people in the Linux world don't like something, um, you know, there's moaning and gnashing of teeth. But there you go. What are you going to do? It's a bit like this LTT thing. Nothing they've said Thank is you wrong. For the follow, Imazdrin. Hi, Imazdrin. Thanks very much for stopping by. Welcome to the stream. Hey, Phil. How you doing? Ah, actually, Phil, whilst you're here. Can I... Uh, how do I do this? It's done that crazy thing again. No, I didn't want you to do this. Uh, here. No. I was just going to add you as a mod. Um, but it's, um, it's misbehaving. I'll do, I'll do it, um, after the stream. Um, Right then, and then Linux Paul says, speaking of the community, nothing like not some not liking something did yeah, exactly, yeah, LTT's thing. I I I don't see a lot wrong with with what Linus did. Um, you know, if everyone feels like Lin, Linus did something Linus did something wrong. 
But in actual fact, he had a broken package and he didn't know how to deal with, you know, what... He, he could have read the messages a bit more, I suppose, because that message, that proceed at all, at all costs, I know what I'm doing. That's a brave statement to make when you're 10 minutes into using Linux, right? Yes, I know what I'm doing. You know, when it tells you it's about to remove a bunch of stuff. I think there was enough red flags there that maybe he should not have done that. But he got into that position because the package was busted. And because the package was busted, in order for Apt to resolve the right thing to do, the resolution was remove a bunch of software. So, um, yeah, he encountered broken software. He should have behaved a bit more thoughtfully when presented with the messages he was presented with but nevertheless where where he ended up is not a great place to throw users um uh but yeah saying i know what i'm doing 10 minutes in probably not the right and you actually have to type those words as well you know it's really it's really asking you to be dead certain that you know what you're doing um so it's a foot gun <laughs> And which he, uh, he duly uh, discharged. Right, I think I think I'm going to wrap it up there today. Or shall I? Shall I quickly? I tell you what, no, I won't. Let's do let's do one other thing. Oh no, without a network, we can't really do the other thing. Or can we? Well, let's find out. Let's learn together. I'm going to turn the Raspberry Pi off. We're going to put that same image on the ssd again oh this has been running now so that ssd was running that pi for the whole time it is um barely warm uh was it king egypt that was asking about these it is barely warm barely warm yeah so how long was that running half an hour i mean it wasn't crashing away but you know it was being used right then so let's um let's move back here let's put this image oh let's do this put this image back on the uh ssd because we've obviously pretty much destroyed the ssd start restoring restore no that's the wrong keyboard <laughs> okay and i suppose we could go in and just fix a couple of those permissions bugs and what have you uh yeah we should probably do that hmm they come in different sizes as well um i i the reason, so I had an assorted collection of USB sticks, different capacities, different vendors, and some were just astonishingly slow. And doing this sort of thing, it was taking blooming forever, literally forever. I did one last night whilst I was listening to another podcast and doing something else. So it, the time it took was irrelevant, but it took 20 minutes. So um, I've moved all of those into a separate box and I bought all fast stuff and just like two of a few of them but they're all super fast and it speeds up your you know productivity right then so that's that done let's um let's close this down uh pull the drive out so we're going back into poking all of this pie So that's our boot device. Uh, we'll apply power there. So that's the main power. And we'll turn the capture card on, and hit the power switch. So the Raspberry Pi is coming up again. So this should boot us back into the display. So, oh, no, stop, stop, Martin. Stop, stop, stop. Got ahead of myself. What I want to do is Go back there, 
go to this view. We'll put some ROM, oh my gosh, lots of windows. We'll put some ROMs on the, um, on the card. Uh, so we are putting that in here. We'll open a terminal there. Ugh. Just move the wrong, oh goodness me. It's typing a go-go right then. Let's just clear that all out. Let's um, make our directory. Nice, okay. So we can actually, um, this is mapped to the same user account. We can fix that cache directory now-ish. Oops. So, there we go. We, what we're doing is, um, we're on the mounted image uh, for that pie image and we'll make a ROMs directory and then we'll copy. I think that's everything. Yeah, we'll copy all of that because I have no idea how this is going to work uh, over to here. Actually, yeah, no, that's going to be fine. Writable uh, storage ROMs and paste that in there. So I think that's just pasted all of them in. That's another benefit of this uh, device. So if we get rid of boot and then eject this one, this should flush the cache. So yeah, that's done that. So now our... Um, We've got a bunch of ROMs on here because I was going to use the network to copy the ROMs over, but obviously we've run into some issues that need debugging there. So we'll do it this way instead. Uh, oh go gosh, I did a bad. I should have uh, I should have uh, done that a bit more cleanly. Maybe we've got some ROMs on that device. We'll see. Uh, so let's. Um, Let's move over to the capture view of things again, and we'll turn the Pi on and let it go through its process and see if we can, we won't be able to collect artwork on what happened. Oh, actually, no, we could, we could join the network using our escape hatch uh, minimal desktop environment, and then we can scan those ROMs and see what happens. So we should try that. We should try that. <coughs> uh, let's have a look here. Um, I do have warm hands today, but it, you know that this device is it's not hot at all. Right then, so let's um, let's use this keyboard. Oh my gosh. So this, I know this looks like a big black screen, but this is actually the um, the desktop. So start our terminal emulator. Let's run conman gtk and we're, oops, wrong mouse. So let's turn on Wi-Fi. Okay. So that is connected to the Wi-Fi. There we go. So this device is now connected to the network. So let's do 
Ludo. Let's do it without the OS integration piece. Let's see what happens. So I've never done this, so I don't actually know how to drive the software, but I'm sure, you know, we'll figure it out together. So picking up my controller, I can add games, scan your collection. Scan this directory. Scan this directory. Right, it's off. There we go. So I wonder um, what this will do exactly. So it's running through them all. It found 372 new games. Well, that's pretty good. Um, uh, go backwards. That's backwards. Okay. So we've scanned some stuff. And we've got a NES category here. And there's some US and Japanese games in here. Oh, 1942. So I wonder how we get the artwork. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Roger Zanoni. Thanks, Roger Zanoni. Welcome to the stream. Right then, let's boot that. There we go. Uh, what do I press? Start yes so we're not getting audio off my capture device but uh this is it this uh in air quotes works so the emulator bit that works quite nicely but we need to do some it's quite slow though isn't it i might need to oh i can't fire that's not fire Wow, that's super slow. So I need to I need to do some uh, looking into why I've managed to make this go so slow. Um, but it does actually function, and this is a Raspberry Pi four, so it should shouldn't be this slow. It should actually be able to emulate a NES perfectly fine, unless this was the speed nineteen forty two ran at on the NES. I'm obviously. My only experience of 1942 was the arcade machine, so I don't know if this is um, actually how fast it ran, but I'm going to guess that perhaps it, sh it should be quicker than this. So I need to look into um, the graphics stack and make sure I've actually got everything enabled properly, because I'm going to say this feels like it's all software, in software rendered. There's no GPU acceleration here. So we'll have to check on that, but there we go, that works. And I'm gonna press the back button. What does that do? That doesn't do anything. What does the Y button do? Does that exit the game? No. X, B, uh, oh, that's doing a loop. The start button is pause, okay. The Xbox button, ah, there we go. That's what I was looking for. So take a screenshot and options okay can I get in there yes what have we got under options region overclock no sprite limit mm, okay this is obviously emulator related stuff I'm not gonna mess with any of that because I don't know what I'm doing at the moment uh, so how do I come out of there that button yes okay this is all consistent navigation at least so if I go into settings, full screen video filter, smooth, raw, LCD, CRT. So let's just do raw and see what that does. Did that do the right thing? Yes. Let's try a different game just to see if um, there's something. I, I never had a NES and I didn't know many people with them, so I'm not mega familiar with uh, a lot of the titles. Um, after, but if, that, if anything's going to be slow on, on the NES, I imagine that would be it. Um, 
Uh, Alien Syndrome, that was a game I enjoyed, but on the Amiga. Let's uh, give that a try. Press play. Okay. Um, so I'm going to... I'm... I can't tell if this is actually running at a reasonable speed or if this is slow. What, what do you reckon? Anyone here familiar with like the characteristics of NES emulation and if these are what you'd expect for these games? Uh, yeah, I mean it works. That's the that's the first thing. So I need to I need to check out my OBS stuff. Do I have to pick this person up? Yes. Oh. Right, okay, and then what was it to exit? It was um, uh, start. No, that was just pause. Why? Back. I'm going to get. <laughs> uh, Can't seem to get out of here. Okay. Well, what I was able to do in the last game, I apparently can't do in this one, which is. Oh, actually, no, I'm pressing the wrong button. It's this one. Okay. We're good. So we can exit by pressing that button. There we go. Okay. So I think we need to do some work on the performance side of things. So I've got some takeaways. Let's uh, let's go back here. So I need to get the network going, priority one. I need to look at why the performance is a bit shunky and then find out if we can get the service management to work inside Ludos mode so we can turn on and off SSH and Samba because I think what I want to do is have that that toggle working because the Samba configuration is not insecure but it's like it's designed just to give unfettered access so being able to turn it off and on is actually a good mitigation to it being um, uh, a fully open Samba server <clears throat> because you can decide when it's time to enable it to do stuff so um, uh, Ventoy would be fun for one of those. Oh, one of the uh, things that's that's VMs is uh, not VMs. It's you know bootable multi-boot ISO. Looks a bit slow and j just checked YouTube. Looks a bit slow and jerky. So when you say you checked YouTube, looks a bit slow and jerky. What were you referring to there? The games that I was just playing or something else? Uh, or you know, it, it did that performance look about right? because <laughs> you know I I've got no frame of reference I'll probably have to put something on here I'm more familiar with in order to gauge the performance um, alien syndrome so what you saw me playing looks jerky or it is jerky <laughs> um, I, I suspect that there's work to be done on making it faster oh, you're, <laughs> which question you answering <laughs> Are you saying what I just showed doesn't look fast enough? That's probably the better question. It's a single question. If so, fine. We'll go away and make it better. Um, I wonder how we do that. Definitely had the hardware stuff working properly before. Right, okay. So with that, I think, I think we'll... Uh, yeah okay good thanks king egypt okay we'll um we'll take that then let's have a little look here let's see who's up to stuff um uh this, <laughs> this one looked interesting um 
Okay. Let's let's try this one out because we've not been here before. Oh, mind you, I don't know. Uh. Okay, well, we always learn something. Let's try this. Let's do this thing. So we're going to go and raid a channel. Um, we're going to do that now. Thank you all for coming, everyone. Um, probably be back tomorrow where uh, we'll either fix or I will have fixed some of those issues that we just saw. But for now we're uh we're gonna head over to um uh rockstar 74 who is making an app not look like crap apparently so uh i'll see you over there bye for now <laughs>